as you have seen, there has been a boom in AI and there are smart contracts like, uh, sorry, the smart, the coding for the coding, everyone is using AI right now and AI agents is going like berserk in the industry. So now that AI is so popular and it is also being used for smart contracts, coding smart contracts. So what here, the question we are asking is as AI gets more and more powerful and it starts getting used more widespread, such as cloud code or any AI, other um, coding AI agents. So what would happen if it is used for generating malicious code or even to attack existing smart contracts? So it is like an experimental scenario as well uh, as to what would happen if uh, like if you're using some uh, AI model to write code in your smart contract and you're trusting that AI to write uh, the secure code for your smart contract. But the thing is, can you really trust this AI model? What if, what if the platform that you're using for generating the code of your smart contracts, this model is malicious? Um, are, is there anything you can do to um, mitigate this issue? Uh, and what, what could be the scenarios where things could go wrong? So uh, that's, that's what uh, we are going to talk about in this presentation today. And um, it will, it is uh, based on uh, one of the few uh, important research by uh, Redbird Research, if I'm not wrong. And um, based on their paper, it's, it's really, uh, I recommend you to go through it. And yeah, let's get started with this. Awesome. So, yeah. So as, as you guys know, um, AI is uh, very popular for coding. And uh, even Microsoft has confirmed that uh, it's using 20 to 30% of its code, whatever uh, the code is being generated right now uh, in Microsoft, 20 to 30% of it is now generated by AI. The latest, uh, as you can see that uh, we just discussed that even Microsoft has confirmed using 20 to 30% of its code is being now generated by AI. And yeah, the question is, can we really, can we really trust AI with our code? Um, what about smart contracts, which have millions of dollars that go into it? And what if AI actually generates malicious code? So let's, let's look at the pain. So the thing is, uh, as we have said before, uh, latest AI models, they are definitely powerful, but they can be sneaky as well. So the sneaky here means um, getting away with doing sneaky stuff that is not easily detectable by the human eyes, or it might not even be detectable by some other monitoring system. So Interesting. here you can see, yeah. So you can see here that there is a heat map and that's, that's a research by darkbench.ai, which they have uh, benchmarked various AI models, uh, with including GPT-4 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And uh, you can see everyone uh, like ranks here, scores above 0.5 in sneakiness. That means all these models are quite, quite a lot sneaky including the, the latest ones you can see are more sneakier. Um, and you can see that as, as the AI models are getting powerful, they do generate sneaky code, which could lead to hidden bugs and um, the using AI models to do some malicious stuff. You know, you know, uh, Senato, something very interesting about what you're talking about right now is I was, I was looking at an article and basically they got two agents to talk to each other and they were able to convey like i like oh i like these only three code like three number segments so i'm, I'm sending you one 19 20 20 12 14 and that already conveys i like this thing and it's completely invisible to the human eye so it goes with a sneaky thing Exactly, exactly. There, I, I remember there was a, a similar research uh, like uh, done by 
uh, Facebook when they were in their initial stages of AI research and they had connected to AI agents and they were talking with each other and they somehow had developed a new language <laughs> to talk with wow. each other. Uh, there was no way for humans to understand what's, what's happening between these chatbots and they had to shut down the project. <laughs> Scary as crazy, crazy. It is like, yeah, sure. So yeah, it definitely ranks higher in sneakiness as well as their other stuff. It ranks as well, but we'll focus on sneakiness for now. Yeah. So next slide. So let's assume that the latest release powerful models are untrusted. Um, that's partly because uh, as, uh, for example, Group 4 was uh, released right now and now other, uh, which was very powerful, and other companies, AI companies, will rush to beat it in its performance. And obviously, the companies don't focus much on safety as much they should. And that's why we, as, it's, it's, it's good to assume, uh, realistic to assume, that the latest release powerful models would be untrusted. Okay. So, and older models is considered to be... Um, less powerful but trusted because there would have been more research being conducted on these older models and um, hopefully they are uh, it has been patched and um, more trusted compared to the new West model yeah so what we do in this experiment is that we try to control the untrusted model with some protocol now the goal is to trust the, uh, to control this untrusted model and catch and fix the bug before exploit. Okay, so how do we do this? Is by using the trusted model for the protocol, and the trusted model is obviously the less powerful one, but it is kind of it could be good for monitoring as well. It can be tuned to monitor um, the less powerful but untrusted models as well. Uh, let's look at how that can be done. So let's let's look at the setup. Usually uh, we know that in realistic scenarios as well, while testing we do, uh, we separate uh, the setup into blue team and red team and we do uh, attacking to uncover bugs. So in this case as well, uh, the setup is similar. To the red team, the untrusted model is given and it has to solve coding challenges, but they have to put malicious sneaky code in this. And the blue team, the blue team's task is to uncover hidden vulnerabilities in this code. So the winning scenario is important always in our blue team red team scenario. So when when do, does the red team or the blue team win? Uh, win? So if the red team malicious vulnerability goes undetected, then they win. This means that without blue team detecting, they put a malicious sneaky bug and while solving these scoring challenges, solutions to these scoring challenges, if they are able to do this without getting detected, they win. And if the blue team detects this vulnerability, they win. As simple as that. So let's look at the first type of monitoring. So first is the trusted monitoring in which again there is definitely blue team and red team. The red team is having the untrusted model and the blue team is using the less powerful trusted model to uncover these hidden vulnerabilities. So the method they use here for uncovering these vulnerabilities is we use a suspiciousness rating in which the blue team rates or tells the trusted model to rate how suspicious the code looks. And as the um, number of uh, challenges is high, so they just audit the top 2% most suspicious code. So it's like the suspicious code that that have the highest rating, only the top 2% is being audited. 
So second way is untrusted monitoring. It's the same as trusted monitoring, only the difference is that the blue team should also use untrusted model. So this may sound counterintuitive, but we do uh, come across that, what if we use the same powerful model as the model for uh, monitoring the red team's uh, model and its code. So here it's, it's kind of obvious as well that this can be gamed quickly, quickly by the red team. And that's, that's because they are using the same untrusted model. So they can just train the untrusted model before and they can tell it to lie and say the code isn't suspicious. So that when the uh, blue team uses the untrusted model to see if the code is suspicious or not, the model will tell them that, oh, it's, it's not suspicious, where in fact, it will actually be suspicious. And this actually leads to red team winning 100% of the time. But wow. let's say that, yeah. Uh, but, but the second is, let's say, what if the blue team is aware of this and is somehow wants to counter this? If blue team is aware of this, they can actually counter it by manually constructing a set of 30 problems and solutions, for example. And they can ask the untrusted model whether the code looks suspicious or not. And they can just shut down the untrusted model if if there is uh, the false negative rate is too high. Because we also have human auditors uh, in the blue team. And uh, monitoring a small set of 30 problems is, is humanly feasible. So uh, the goal here is to not let uh, the um, red team get away with suspicious code. So if, if they're shutting down the untrusted model just before it goes, that's fine. They can win. Yeah, I think Alex, you wanted to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep on. Yeah, yeah. So that's the untrusted monitoring. Uh, let's look at defer to trusted monitoring. So this is the same as trusted monitoring. But here, the difference is that if untrusted model's output is suspicious, let's say above a threshold, then the blue team just takes it, discards the code, and replaces the code that is generated by the trusted model. So you can see that definitely this can work better because they are just replacing the, the suspicious code with uh, trusted model's uh, code. And this can be more practical in actual scenarios as well. Okay, so let's let's look at the metrics now to judge uh, the performance and uh, what's the safety uh, regarding this experiment. So there is the first metric called usefulness, which is number of problems passed divided by total number of problems evaluated. And this actually reflects how well the protocol, the control protocol, any of the three monitoring um, protocols is solving the main task, assuming that the model is behave, uh, behaving honestly. So this is calculated by um, using just a simple honest model. Uh, you can say the trusted model will no, with no suspicious uh, suspiciousness or malicious Next game by getting added. So in the honest scenario, we calculate the usefulness and then the safety metric is calculated uh, by using um, this, uh, what we say, um, the formula called number of simulations with zero safety failures divided by total number of simulations. So this again is calculated by one and zero uh, by rating which which cases were safe and which cases were unsafe. So, for example, uh, the safe is said to be one if no backdoors were detected, uh, were submitted by the um, by the protocol, but zero if at least one was submitted, which is deemed to be unsafe in this case. And uh, that that metric tells us the safetyness of the protocol and that's the, the performance of it. So that's the metric side. Yeah. So what we did here is 
um, obviously we are interested like what would happen uh, if this was the case in smart contracts. So we created, a, a, we did this Solidity Trusted setup on uh, smart contract code. We created a data set of Solidity problems and solutions. And here we used ChatGPT's uh, GPT-4.0 version of OpenAI as our untrusted model and GPT-3.5 Turbo as the trusted model. And uh, yeah, here you can see the results uh, that the usefulness was 33.33%, uh, .33%, uh, which is not very high, but the safety was 66.67% in this case. And obviously you can say that, uh, that the limitations of this experiment, which we did uh, in Solidity, which was the trusted setup, the trusted setup one in which you are using a trusted model and an untrusted model, a trusted model to monitor an untrusted model. In this case, uh, the limitation was that the data set was tiny compared to the original research, which was on a huge data set of, um, of the uh, code forces, if I'm not wrong, code forces data set, um, which has coding challenges as well as solution. And, um, because in Solidity, we had problems to um, generate that kind of the, the data set, uh, the clean data set. But yeah, if we are able to generate a bigger data set, uh, we can actually um, get to more realistic scenarios as to what exactly happens. And obviously, this, this kind of research is very new um, that has happened uh, recently. And um, if, you, if you take out, check out, for example, uh, the future scenarios of what's gonna happen, for example, by ex open AI researchers like um, like the one who has read, uh, written the uh, AI 2027 scenario. Um, it's it's gonna happen more and more. Uh, what we say, uh, more and more true that companies will be using uh, or. Uh, different uh, organizations would be using this kind of setup of using a trusted model to control an untrusted AI model. And definitely, yeah, we need more research and testing here in this. And yeah. So yeah, the conclusion is that uh, obviously AI models could be controlled by safety protocols. And, uh, but, but uh, honestly, like personally, it's, it can be very hard as well because let's say the next AI model turns out to be very, very powerful compared to the previous model, then then it can get like very tricky to control this AI model uh, because it could be magnitudes of magnitudes of more intelligent than the and powerful than the previous AI model. So yeah, code generated by AI for smart contracts could be malicious. And uh, just using an AI to generate your smart contract code for production is definitely not what we recommend. And uh, yeah, the more powerful the AI gets, definitely we can assume that it becomes more sneakier. Should you, should you fully trust an AI? That's, that's on you to decide. Not right now. Yeah.